To understand quantum mechanics, we have to first understand how time is being created and the part we play in its creation. Modern physics cannot explain the continuous forward momentum of time. In quantum atom theory, the individual atoms are creating their own time by the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation. Even the individual atoms of the observer are creating their own space-time geometry. When there is a photon-electron coupling, two-dimensional space on the surface of an atom expands into three-dimensional space-time. The wave function will expand as a light sphere of quantized wave fronts. When each wave front comes in contact with another atom, we will have a moment in time, creating a new wave function of future possibilities. This radiating energy creates the probability of the uncertainty principle in quantum physics. This is because the observer can collapse the wave function when and where he likes into moments of time that will be part of his own created space-time. The uncertainty principle of quantum physics is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. We therefore have a sea of electromagnetic radiation creating a blank canvas for the observer that he or she can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. Because light is electromagnetic radiation in the visible spectrum, this process of the forward momentum of time is visible to us. In the two-slit experiment we can see light radiate out striking objects creating new moments of time. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state, unless acted upon by an external force. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave-particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wavefront. The wavefront will expand in the form of a light sphere and the polarization will be the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. Because each atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expansion of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation, of time and space. The process of time is inverse, just like addition and subtraction, or multiplication and division. When an atom emits a photon or quantum of energy, we have addition, and when another atom absorbs that quantum of energy, we have subtraction. Because this process is happening in three-dimensional space, it is more like multiplication and division, but the end result is the same. Time moves on and the observer remains in the moment of now. At a fundamental level, the observer is the observed, within his or her own created space-time. 
In this theory, there is no universal time, because the individual atoms create their own space-time geometry relative to their position and momentum. Because of this, the observer, as a group of atoms, is the only true reference frame. If the observer looks up at the stars, he sees back in time through light years of space. The position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. He will be able to look back in time in all directions. When the observer looks down into the atom, he can see time-dependent quantum mechanics when the atoms come together under their own gravity, forming interference patterns of their own. But if he zooms in on an individual atom, he will see time-independent quantum mechanics, and the standing waves are unaffected by time, and we find the probability of the uncertainty principle. Therefore, the infinity of time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes. And this is why momentum is itself time-dependent. Even a child's toy spinning top will form its own space-time geometry relative to its position and momentum, creating its own gravitational field. In this diagram, a candle is at each end of a rotating mechanism. When the mechanism is rotated, the angular momentum will cause the candle flames to lean in towards the center of the energy source. In quantum atom theory, this is because of destructive and constructive interference between the radiating flame and the radiating energy of the angular momentum will create an unbalanced force. The flames are attracted towards the center of the energy source in just the same way that the moon is attracted to the center mass of the earth. By the force of gravity, the radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects, and this will create the opposite force of gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Therefore we have a universe, universal dynamically evolving geometry of time in the form of ever-expanding spherical quantized wavefronts. The observer will fill this as the forward momentum of time and will see patterns of a beautiful symmetry on every level of creation, from seashells to spiral galaxies. The atoms will distort the geometry of space-time, creating mathematical patterns of every conceivable shape. The same basic method of pattern formation, the same mechanism of symmetry breaking, governs the whole universe of organic and non-organic matter. The infinity of space-time is creating unlimited possibilities, and everything with a non-zero probability will form its own space-time geometry of ever greater complexity. But because there are only a limit, limited number of elements, everything will reform in cycles, creating the same patterns of broken symmetry. Only a slight distortion in the space-time symmetry will spiral out, creating the universal patterns of our universe. It is easy to see how our infinite sequence of whole numbers can represent the infinity of three-dimensional space, because the numbers can be used to represent three-dimensional shapes. But it is the irrational numbers that drop out of the whole number sequence that represent the never-ending expansion of time. In quantum atom theory, the irrational number pi is a physical constant and represents the expanding curvature of space-time. It is not just because it is random and carries on expanding forever its position within the whole number system points towards its link with the forward momentum of time. In quantum physics, it takes three quantum numbers to calculate the wave function as it expands as an inverse volume of space. The decimal expansion of pi starts at the number three and goes to infinity, representing three-dimensional space-time.